Good morning, adventurers. My name is Ben, and welcome to a morning show where I sit around, drink some tea, and talk about the D. Mm. So first up for tea and D today, I have my mug mug, the mug that is stat blocked as a mug, um, and inside of it, I have some of my uh, throat coat, throat comfort yogi tea that I have often enough in here that I'm realizing I forgot in the other room because I plan very well sometimes. Yep. That's it. That's the end of that one. So, getting into what we were talking about today, uh, people seem to enjoy when I talked a little bit about the variant rules that were in the DMG. Um, so we're going to talk about some more of them today. Um, we are going to actually pretty much pick up where we left off and go forward from there. We are going to skip um, the one specific part <clears throat> and sort of jump over that. And we'll come back to it at a different time because I think that it sort of deserves its own it deserves its own thing uh, because it is kind of a whole uh, it is an investment to actually get into um, so what if you're wondering what we're skipping there is honor and sanity which are uh, variant rules for additional ability score options in there uh, and we're just going to talk about some more of the like little ones as we go through here because uh, those are the ones that you can kind of like grab and be like oh that's kind of cool I'm going to throw that into my game and just sort of here and there um so, uh, again, this is all in Chapter 9 of the DMG, Dungeon Master's Workshop, uh, if you are interested in figuring out where they are. This first one starts in the Ability Options. Uh, it's the last one in the Ability Options, other than the Honor and Sanity. And then we're going to get into some of the Adventuring Options. But I actually sort of cut it last time where I did, because I think that this one does kind of fit into the Adventuring Options category more than the Ability Options, but I understand why they put it in the Ability Options. So, the first one we're going to talk about today is hero points. <clears throat> hero points uh, are, a, they are a little pool of uh, dice that you get to have, essentially. Um, this is a good option for longer campaigns in particular, um, or if you are looking for um, just a little extra bump in a uh, one-shot or short, short campaign, these actually work pretty well too. Uh, so essentially, what hero points are is that uh, beginning at first level, you end up you get five of them, and then every time you level up, you lose all of the ones you haven't used yet, and you gain five plus half of your character level rounded down um, number of hero points. And these hero points are represented by a pool of d6s. Uh, each point is one d6. Uh, so essentially, at first level, you have a pool of five different d6s. Uh, and in order to use one of these, you essentially just declare that you're going to use it, after you have made a roll, but before uh, you know what the actual result is. So uh, if I roll a d20 here, and I roll a 4, which I actually did just roll, uh, I could say, I want to use it, one of my hero points on that. So I take one of my d6s, I spend it on it, I get a 4, so add the 4 to that, plus whatever modifier I have, and that is my new result. Uh, they're kind of like mini bardic inspirations that you can just kind of have on hand, which is kind of nice. Um, it's It's... It's just sort of a nice little thing to have on hand if you are in kind of a tight spot and you're like, man, I really need this. I'm going to burn a hero point for this roll. Um, these recharge on a level up. So if you're playing a campaign with these in them and you are going, you know, several sessions between level ups, because that's how most long term campaigns will go. You're going to want to kind of ration these out and use them for important things. But you don't want to not use them because then you're just wasting them when you level up because they just go away. Um, the other really cool thing about these is that uh, you can use uh, them during death saves. And when I say that, I don't mean you can roll one in addition to a death save. I mean, if you fail a death saving throw, you can spend one hero die or hero point. I am going to end up using them interchangeably, I'm sure in order to just succeed on that roll instead. Which means that uh, you do get kind of like that epic, heroic feeling, sort of, of like being pushed back to life uh, as if by some kind of otherworldly power um, if you are down and unconscious in uh, the middle of a fight. So uh, hero points can help you out in that way as well. They are just like a little extra pool that you can use to buff yourself for... Uh, specifically attack rolls, ability checks, saving throws. So d20 rolls for the most part. Um, and I think they're pretty cool. Uh, I do. They... I would I would probably 
use them a little bit differently in my game if I were to use them. I would probably make it like, okay, there are 10 of these, essentially, and you can use them, um, and when you use them, they transport to me, the DM, and when I use them, they transport to you, the player. Like, there's a pool of 10 of them, you start with 7, I start with 3 or something like that, and they get traded back and forth. So there's always some on the table, um, but you are uh, still sort of at the risk of being knocked back if you do use them because they go to the dm it's sort of like the the fate tokens or luck tokens or whatever they're called from the fantasy flight star wars role-playing game uh which is a really cool mechanic uh moving on from that one skipping over honor and sanity because again i will cover those at a different point we get into the actual adventuring options section uh though that one does again to me sort of feel like it i understand why they associated it with the skills and abilities but i i feel like it goes more in the adventuring options <clears throat> um so these adventuring options are just like little tweaks you can make to your game uh, in order to sort of lean into a certain aspect more than another. Um, so the first section under adventuring options is fear and horror, and these are actually pretty self-explanatory. Uh, fear, specifically, uh, is a, a rule, quote-unquote rule, a condition that you can uh, sort of toss in there specifically when your adventurers encounter something that they cannot overcome. It, that is actually the lead sentence. When adventurers confront threats that they have no hope of over, overcoming, that is how it, this section starts. Uh, essentially, it has you, the DM, set a DC, and then ask everybody to make a wisdom saving throw. If they fail the wisdom saving throw, they are frightened for one minute, repeating the save at the end of each of your turns. Um, so it's just it's something to kind of motivate the like get away from this thing as fast as you possibly can mentality that a lot of the big big creatures that low level adventurers might just be dumb enough to try and fight kind of need um horror on the other hand is a little bit more than that it uh, again horror involves more than simple fright is how this one leads uh so this is this is sort of like less about just like ah, oh, i'm scared of you and more about like the actual like horror of the world sometimes. Um, this one, in this one specifically, uh, if you if you present your your party, I I will call them. I was gonna say players, but your party with a, a situation uh, that is completely contrary to common understanding of what can and should occur in the world, or upon the realization of a dreadful truth. Uh, you can ask them to make a charisma saving throw to resist the horror. You set the DC once again. Um, and then this one plays into uh, the madness mechanic that is in uh, the chat in, in the chapter eight in chapter eight of the DMG, uh, which is another really cool chapter that I, I'm sure I will talk about at some point here because uh, scattered al among all of these random topics, there is room for me just telling you guys about what's in the DMG because nobody really reads it apparently. Um, and so that is more, it's its more than being frightened of it. It is something that actually then like sits and weighs on your character's conscience and forces you to play the character a little bit differently, which is something that is a significant bump. And by bump, I mean like change in mentality as you go through playing the character. And it's really cool. It is a very interesting sort of um, way to go about that. Um, and if you, if you haven't read those parts, I do recommend reading them because they are pretty cool. Uh, moving on from fear and horror, we have healing, which is fun. Um, healing is something that I will die on the hill of uh, touting that it is very much worth it. It is not a waste of time. It is not a non-viable option in combat in 5th edition. And... I, I will die on this hill because I play heavy support, control, and uh, healing characters almost always. So this is something that like I think is important. But healing here is uh, in this section. It gives you a couple of different options uh, for how to approach healing, specifically with relation to hit dice more than anything else. This is less about like healing uh, via magic and everything like that and so this is a good option for if you have a party with few or no healers uh so there's a couple of individual options under this section first off healer's kit dependency uh 
A character cannot spend any hit dice after finishing a short rest until someone expends one use of a healer's kit to bandage and, bandage and treat the character's wounds. So what happens is on a short rest, you do not get to roll your hit dice and get hit points from those uh, or from that short rest unless somebody expends a use of a healer's kit on you. In which case, then you do get to spend your hit dice and actually get that back. So that is sort of like the middle ground of the three options that they have here. That's the like, okay, a little bit of a resource drain, but still not unreasonable. Uh, healer's kit is kind of like a first aid kit. It's not like crazy, crazy to find one or crazy expensive or anything like that. Um, but you do have to expend part of a resource. The next one is the like high fantasy super heroic option, um, healing surges. And they actually do kind of talk about it being a little bit more super heroic in this. Um, the healing surge is kind of what I talked about when I talked about the amulet uh, in NADPOD. Um, this is a, as an action, uh, specifically, sorry, specifically, this is for campaigns where healing is kind of rare or there is no dedicated person with healing magic or something like, or very limited access to it in your party. So healing surges uh, allow you to, as an action, use a healing surge and expend up to half of your hit dice. Uh, for each hit dice spent in that way, you roll the die and add your constitution modifier to it. You regain hit points equal to that total, and then you can decide to continue to add dice up to half of your total after each die is rolled. You don't have to be like, I'm going to do six, and then throw six of them at the same time and be like, ah, that's too many, or ah, not enough. You can roll it in sequence, and then you have to stop when you hit half, or you're happy with it, one of those two. Whichever one comes first. Um, and then it, you can only do that once between rests. That includes short rest and long rest. Uh, when you have this in place, most of the time you will allow players to get all of their hit dice back on a short rest because, or on a long rest, because they kind of need it to be able to stay standing in the middle of battle. Um, and with a short rest, uh, a character regains hit dice equal to his or her level divided by four. So uh, you do get some back on a short rest, but it's simply not as many as if you finish a long rest. Uh, then after that, we have slow natural healing. This one is interesting to me. This is very much like more gritty campaign. Uh, characters do not regain hit points at the end of a long rest. Instead, they can spit, spend hit dice to heal at the end of a long rest as they would with a short. Um, that rule sort of like makes it, it, it makes it harder to actually heal up. You still regain like all of your spell slots and everything else like that. But it just, it makes it so that, like, you have some injuries that might last. Because you're not going to get uh, full health, necessarily, from your hit dice every single time. And you don't necessarily want to if you're spending some of your hit dice during a long rest. Because the way that I would rule this is that at the top of your long rest... Or no, the way that I would rule this is that you have as many hit dice going into the long rest as you have to be able to spend. So if you have burned through a bunch of them and you have three left, that is how many you have to be able to spend. And then you regain them all when you actually finish that long rest. So it's, it's or you get re regain half of what you spent at, or no, when you use, no, I'm all over the place. You regain half of what you used at the end of that long rest. I am merging these rules together. So that one is for like nitty gritty sort of things. Uh, going on from healing, we come to rest variants. And this is one that people actually like this is one you hear about a lot more because um, there are two var two variant options here, and they are total opposite ends of the spectrum. Um, but this is this is one that you do hear a lot about more, specifically the like more realistic gritty one. So I'm going to start with the other one first, actually. First up, epic heroism. Uh, this system of resting actually replaces short and long rest times with uh, moves it from sorry there we go being an hour and eight hours to five minutes and one hour. Um, this is to sort of like emphasize that combat is going to be a much more routine thing here. Uh, and it does suggest that if you do it this way, you should very much consider adjusting the levels of spell slots that people can regain so that they aren't just like blowing ninth level spells and then sitting down for an hour and then coming back and blowing more ninth level spells. Uh, it specifically says consider allowing spellcasters to to restore expended spell slots equal to only half of their maximum spell slots rounded down at the end of a long rest and limit the spell slots required or restored to fifth level or lower 
only a full eight hour rest will allow a spellcaster to restore all spell slots and regain spell slots higher than six level, which makes sense to me. Um, but that that short rest of in one hour you are back up to full fighting force, that's crazy. That that's a, that is a significant bump. Um, and five minutes to just like wrap up real quick, tear it off with your teeth, and get back in there. That works for like a gladiatorial ring in my mind, but it is something interesting for a full-blown campaign for sure. And it, it is very much a more combat-focused campaign than if you're doing it that way. Now, the other one that we hear about a lot more is the gritty realism, quote-unquote, one. Uh, this blows short rest out to be eight hours long and long rest to be seven days long. Um, this really sort of, like, bogs down a campaign pace if applied. And sometimes that's what you want. Sometimes you want, like, that long slog feeling. Uh, but this is where, like, players have to really sit down and consider what the actual pros and cons of expending these resources are because they will not get them back readily. Um, they, like, just flat out cannot afford to be in too many fights. They can't afford to use a 4th level spell slot and have it go wrong. Like, it, it has to be well thought out, carefully planned, meticulously figured out. And sometimes that is, that is a good thing. Um... It, it does sort of like push players to focus a little bit more on the social aspects of the game. Um, but one of the things that I personally, I don't like this approach that much. One of the things I personally really like about D&D is the fact that the switch can flip from the social aspect of the game to the throwing fireballs and riding dragons aspect of the game in a second. Like that, that is how it can go. And I, I appreciate that a lot about it. So I don't love this approach, but I do understand the place for it, and I very much understand the types of campaigns that would want to use this. Um, and that is actually going to be where we uh, we stop our rules recap, and by recap I mean explanation of random rules in the DMG uh, for today. We have gone a little bit longer than I expected to, um, but that's okay, because why not? Um, so, uh, moving on from that, uh, we are going to talk a little bit about... Uh, streams for today. And by streams today, I mean shows for today. I need to change the title of the spreadsheet to shows instead of streams because I keep reading it and saying streams instead of saying shows. Um, first off, uh, we have on this lovely Monday uh, The Paper Dungeon, Chromatic Dice, Beyond the Realms, Unprepared Casters, Greetings Adventurers, Bards of New York, Hapless Heroes, Ion Adventurers, Cast Party, Three Black Halflings, Hello from the Magic Tavern, King Leo D&D, Antiheroes Anonymous, and the Tabletop Tavern. Please guys go show them some love, let them know that I sent you, because again, someday somebody's going to say something to me about it, and I'm going to think that it's hysterical. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything I have for you guys today. So with all that said, thank you guys so much for making me part of your morning routine. I really do appreciate it, especially going into this last week of Season 2. And thank you so much in particular to my patrons. You guys are the ones that make this show possible. Um... Please, please, please let me know what you want me to talk about. And if you are one of, or if you are interested in becoming one of my patrons, check out the link in the description of this episode. Um, I really do appreciate all the support and engagement that you guys give me. Um, let's see. I believe that is everything I have to say. I just put my die down over here, and I didn't want to do that. Whoops. There we go. Um, so, with all that said, don't forget, everybody. Drink tea, play D&D, &D, and keep on rolling. <laughs>